Ooh, let's have a cup of tea. Welcome to Iceland, where we are reviewing the Hyundai Tucson SUV. It's actually Hyundai's best-selling SUV. It's not that sporty. SUV stands for Sports Utility Vehicle, although it does have a sport button. Looks-wise, I think it actually looks, it looks pretty good. It's definitely a massive improvement on the first two generations. Yeah! Now, looks are totally subjective, but I reckon this car has a very South Korean styling. And what I mean by that is it looks very futuristic. I don't think it looks as good as the Volkswagen Tiguan or the Mazda CX-5, but it looks a lot better than the new Ford Mustang Mach-E. I actually think this car also looks better than the car that's replaced it with that new kind of crazy front grille. I think that looks a bit weird. This car has actually been made since 2005, although that one is kind of unrecognizable to this one. And this is the second largest vehicle that Hyundai make underneath the Santa Fe. From the rear, this car looks really smart. It has LED lights all the way around and they're actually automatic. So you just set them once and forget about them. It has a nice spoiler on the rear here, as well as a funky kind of shark fin aerial. And we have like a, a diffuser under here, which obviously is, isn't a real diffuser, but the piece of trim adds to the overall look of the car. And we have two real exhausts here as well. Oh. That is one dirty engine bay. Now, I should say that this car is a hire car that I've had from a hire company in Iceland. I'm not gonna mention their name because they've not been very good. This is a really filthy car. Iceland tends to have really gravelly, sandy roads, so everything gets very dirty. If you do wanna see an engine bay cleaning video, check out my recent video of my Mercedes C63 AMG where I do a six hour engine bay detail on that car. So this car is fitted with the CRDI engine, which is a diesel, a turbo diesel engine. And I think it is about a 1.6 or 1.7. Now I'm not 100% sure. I can't really tell. They all kind of look the same to me. It features a seven speed dual clutch transmission, which is, you know, it's a surprise for this car for me. The gearbox is very, very smooth. This being either the 1.6 or the 1.7 diesel, it produces about 113 horsepower and between 320 and 340 newton meters of torque. Now you can get this car in a two litre diesel or a hybrid version as well. And I personally think this engine is absolutely fine for your sort of day-to-day -day driving. We're getting about 6.2 litres per 100 kilometres on the fuel economy. So it's not great. And I think that is just because it's a big, heavy car. I actually think a bigger engine in this car might get better fuel economy. Okay, so I've had this car for a total of one week now. We've got it for another week, and so far we've covered between four and 500 kilometers. So I feel like I'm well versed in saying what I like and dislike about it. First off, let's look at some of the key features of the interior. Induction charging pad, two 12 volt sockets, a USB port, auxiliary port, stop start, touchscreen multimedia display, sun visors with extensions, a reversing camera, heated electronic front seats, and they also do do a ventilated version, although this car is not fitted with them. Hill descent control assist, differential lock, lane departure assist, four electronically controlled windows, two of which are automatic, automatic wing mirrors, carbon fiber effect dash trim, heated steering wheel. So the interior of this car is actually really, really big in the front, and I'm six foot one, and I kind of get lost in here, it's that big. I've got my seat all the way back and I can stretch all the way out. My legs are actually fully stretched. I really like these cloth seats. I'm a fan of leather myself, but this cloth is probably the next best thing now that leather is kind of going out of fashion with all the environmental issues that it causes. But this car we've done, I think we did one drive, which was five hours in total, and it was super comfortable. And actually I've been really surprised in how long a distance you can do and not really notice that you've done such long distances. There's loads of space in the front, now let's have a look in the back. As you can see, the boot of this car is absolutely massive. If I curled up into a fetus position, I could definitely close it and you could kidnap me. But this hatch also provides like a rain cover. So if you wanted to sit here and have a picnic, you definitely could. It's basically like a Range Rover. If I jump out, you can see that under here is a space saver spare wheel. And this thing is a lifesaver. I'm really happy to see this, especially in a rugged environment like Iceland. If we did get a flat, I would definitely be able to throw this on and carry on the journey. I recommend getting one of these if you are going to get this car. 
Also, this car has a boot cover and weirdly, it's probably my favorite thing about the car. Being on holiday, we have suitcases and camera kit and stuff that we're putting in the back here. And with this little nifty retractable boot cover, no one can tell if we've got anything in here. And you could have something, you could have nothing, but I recommend if you are gonna get this car, definitely try and get hold of one of these. It does come out and you can place it along here and then it stops your luggage completely falling out uh, or rolling around inside the back but that does reduce your flat load. This boot is really nice because it has a flat load, so when you're lifting heavy objects, you can just slide them through. In the rear of the car, we do actually have quite a lot of space. So these seats are all the way back, so normally you wouldn't have them this far back because you've probably not got someone as tall as me in the front. But yeah, there, there is loads and loads of space here. We've got a retractable armrest, which is nice and comfy. That's got two cup holders in it as well. You've got your own light. It's sort of your standard standard sort of comfy space there's a 12 volt down there as well and there is a third seat belt so you could fit uh, three people here in iceland the top speed is 55 miles an hour so i can't say that i've done an extensive speed review on this car it gets up to 55 miles an hour pretty quickly which is nice and it doesn't feel like it's underpowered until you get on some really steep hills which there are plenty of here and with a full tank of fuel and full of luggage, as well as two people, it does kind of run out of puff. It makes quite a lot of noise going up the steep hills. It has to change down a couple of gears and um, sits at around two and a half thousand RPM, which does get a little bit noisy. It gets to seventh gear as fast as possible because it does have an economic tune in it, which makes total sense for this kind of car. There is a sport button here, which if I press it, it naturally drops down to sixth gear instead of seventh. And if you accelerate, it sounds like a transit van and it really doesn't go anywhere. So I can't really see the point in having a sport mode, although I guess it is nice for, um, for the people that want to feel like they're driving a sporty car. One of my favorite things about the car is the heated steering wheel. Yesterday it was four degrees and rainy and a storm and it's just so nice. It feels like the car is giving you like a nice warm handshake. This car is also fitted with lane departure assist, which it's, it's kind of a nice feature. I used it for the first three days and then I turned it off. It's a weird sensation when you have it turned on. It has two settings, so you can either set it to try and keep you in the lane where the car will literally steer for you, or you can set it where it notifies you if you go outside of your lane. It actually works pretty well most of the time and it knows where the lanes are about 80% of the time. And to be honest, I don't really know where the sensors are on the front of the car, so you couldn't even tell that it's fitted if you weren't looking for it. I'd say it's not a feature that I would choose because it does get a bit annoying and it kind of makes you a lazy driver because you turn it on and then you just think it's going to steer for you. It does beep at you all the time, telling you that it can't detect your hands on the steering wheel, but that's because I tend to hold one hand on the bottom of the steering wheel and it really doesn't like that. So I wouldn't personally go for it because it does become quite annoying. The steering wheel feel overall is absolutely fine for a car of this size. You wouldn't know it's heavy. It is really nice and smooth, very power assisted. So it makes turning around car parks and everything really, really easy. I don't actually know the weight of this car. I will flash it up on the screen now. I'm guessing it's gonna be around 17 or 1800 kilos. It doesn't feel like that kind of weight at all, which is great. This car is fitted with automatic headlights, which makes your life really easy. It's also fitted with automatic wipers. It feels like it's really designed to make your life as easy as possible. What I love about it is the screen is mounted nice and high. So I feel like five years ago, manufacturers used to put the screens in the middle of the dash, and that was kind of annoying because you have to look down, but this one is mounted nice and high up, so you don't really have to take your eyes off the road to look at it. Everyone knows how great Apple CarPlay is. I think it's a standard fit on this car. If it isn't, I'd definitely try and look for one with Apple CarPlay. The cruise control is really good. It has a limiter and a cruise set, so you can choose between two different modes. You can either set what you wanna do. So this one here on this road is 90 kilometers an hour. So I can set it to 90 and just take my feet off. And that's great, it just takes over. Or you can set a limit to 90, whereas I can set it now. It's doing that speed and then it's I can press my foot nice and hard on the accelerator and it doesn't go above that until you press really hard and it hits that safety stop. It beeps at you letting you know that you're going over the speed limit that you set, but it also allows you to overtake and get out of any trouble. So that's a really nice feature.
what do I dislike about this car? Well, I mentioned it earlier, the carbon effect dash isn't really to my taste. It doesn't really feel like it should be in this car. I don't like carbon on sports cars, let alone an SUV like this. So I don't know if you can sort of get rid of that. If you really didn't like it as much as me, you could always wrap it. It's not really a fault of the car. Obviously, Hyundai have to save on some costs, but the, the switches are kind of a kind of plasticky feeling. You tell it's not a German car with its sort of the clickiness that it makes and the scratchiness that it makes, but it's not the end of the world. It is a budget SUV, and although it's a dislike of mine, you really wouldn't you would really wouldn't be bothered by it. A light that I have is this car has done 70,000 kilometers and there's no squeaks, there's no rattles. It feels really well put together for a Korean car and I think Kia have kind of set the standard with the uh, with the manufacturing process that they have and their 7 year warranty. I think when it was new this car was launched with a 5 year warranty with unlimited miles which is absolutely amazing that the company has such confidence in their car. One of my dislikes has to be the engine. Now, granted, I'm used to sort of something a little bit more powerful, but for a city car or for a school run car, a family car, this engine would be absolutely fine. Personally, I'd want a bit more grunt because when you put your foot down, it gets going, but it doesn't really, you know, doesn't really push you back in your seat which personally I'd want a bit more. They do do a hybrid version, which would add that electric motor, which would definitely give you more torque when you, uh, when you put your foot down. I can imagine with this car fully laden with four people full of luggage, if you're going on a holiday somewhere with some bicycles on the back or something, it would feel rather slow. It can be changed quite easily, which is obviously, you know, it's good that you can option a bigger engine. So again, it's a dislike of mine with this car, but it could be easily solved. It's really nice to have a four wheel drive. So this car is fitted with Hyundai's H-Track system, which is really good. It's also really cool that you have this uh, screen in front of you, a small black and white screen, and it tells you which wheels are being sent the power. It has a diff lock, which I have used, but in all honesty, I probably didn't need it. We weren't losing any traction. It was just nice to have a play around with it. The fact that you can get this car in a four wheel drive is really, really good. Most cars of this size don't have a four wheel drive option fitted as standard. I think this one is optioned with it. And in Iceland, it's exactly what you need. It's all automatic as well. So you don't really have to do anything. You just put your foot down. The car senses that it's losing some traction and it sends some power to the rear wheels. Most of the time it's front wheel drive. I do think, however, that the four wheel drive system does suck a bit of the fuel economy. One of my biggest dislikes with this car are the brakes. The brakes are very, very heavily assisted. It's kind of like a Ford Fiesta in the way that when you press the brake pedal, it really doesn't give you anything. And then all of a sudden, boom, it all comes in and you've got, you know, pull off, pull off your face kind of levels of braking. I'd like to have it less assisted or some just a lot more travel at the top of the pedal, uh, but that's a minor thing and I've got used to it over the last few days. Should you buy this car? Personally, I've been really surprised by how good it is. The only other car that I would probably look at would be the Volkswagen Tiguan, but realistically, to get all the same features and perks in a Tiguan, you're probably gonna have to spend a lot more money than you would on this Hyundai. And I've been pleasantly surprised by how good it is. If I was looking for a budget SUV, this would be number one on my list. If you think I've missed anything, or if you'd like to add your own comments, please write it down below in the comments section. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. And I really like the way how, it's not gonna do it now, but when I walk up to it, the wing mirrors unfold. I really like the way how when I walk up to it, the wing mirrors unfold. <laughs> I really like the way of how when I walk up to it,